A great win for our program, great win for our seniors. Finish the legacy of 2023 with this group uh, and, and start a new uh, journey and legacy of the 2024 guys. Um, that's what bowl games are becoming a little bit. And uh, uh, we honored the seniors. Uh, and then we got a little bit glimpse into 2024. We beat a really good football team. I have tons of respect for Coach Norn. He's a great football coach. Uh, they play physical. They play hard. Those were two mirrored programs. Um, and the game was really physical on both sides, and that's what we knew it would be. Um, their quarterback's an exceptional player. And we finally found a way to slow him down a little bit the second half, and um, we struggled in the third quarter, moving the ball offensively. And then we got into a little bit of a rhythm uh, in the fourth quarter, which allowed us a couple of big drives. Um, you know, one obviously with the touchdown and then get the interception and be able to basically run the clock out. And that's something that's really important to me, really important to Coach Riley and our offense is to finish the game, uh, finish, uh, the game on the field offensively. And um, we've been going forward on fourth down all year, and we were four for four tonight, and that was a huge deal. So, Yeah, Coach, how would you assess uh, just – Offensive coordinator Connor Riley in that role the past few weeks. You know, I, I think he did a phenomenal job, and to me, it's a it's a it, entire picture. It's not a three hour snapshot. It's over the last two week two weeks of just watching him uh, handle the offense, handle um, being in the front of the room. Really different for Connor being on the field uh, as opposed to being in the box like it was tonight. That's a different view. Um, Clint Brown. Did a phenomenal job helping him up there. Um, and uh, I'm, we're going to enjoy the heck out of this one. And we'll talk about uh, some of those things later on. But uh, uh, I was proud of Riles. And I, I love Connor Riley. Connor Riley and I have been battling together as assistants. Um, when I got hired at, at NDSU, he was the first guy that I asked to stay with me. When I got hired at K-State, he was the first guy I asked to come with me. Um, and. Uh, so he earned the right tonight to, to do what he did. Chris, you alluded to it out on the stage there, but just how exciting is it to know you got a few more years of Avery and it got kicked off tonight? Um, he's a special, special talent, and he's a very humble kid that has a ton of confidence, and that's a really hard thing to do. Yeah, he's got some swagger, and he's, he, he can be – Brash, I'm sure, if he wants to, but he's such a humble kid. It's a credit to his parents. His parents have done a phenomenal job raising a competitor, raising a guy that hates to lose in anything. Um, but just having the confidence and being humble as well is a pretty unique trait. And the kid's mature beyond his years. And I think a lot of people saw that. North Carolina State's got really good players on defense, and they had a hard time catching him because he just understands angles and how to beat people. And then when he couldn't get the edge, okay, he'd throw it away. He did some big time things. But some of the scrambles he had, guys, against really, really good football players. I mean, for a young player to do what he did, I, we're really excited about the future. Coach, congrats tonight. Um, DJ Giddens, uh, only a sophomore, had over 1,000 yards this year. What are you expecting out of him next year, and what can you speak on how big of an impact he is on this team? Kid was turnt tonight, wasn't he? <laughs> um, sooner, sooner I find out what that is, I'll tell you. But DJ is, I mean, th that kid learned and watched Deuce Vaughn, who's a really good player, and just bided his time. And that's hard to do at that running back position. He carried the ball some uh, last year and stuff, but he learned behind Deuce. And we, we gave him the football this year, and we relied on him. And he's as good a guy kept picking, picking up the protection, a great guy in, in catching the football. And, guys, he's a load to bring down now. He ran through some arm tackles against really good players. And um, I, one thing I knew Riles was going to do, he was going to force feed DJ. Coach, uh, coach, uh, you know, you mentioned it a little bit, but Avery, his ability to sort of create plays out of structure, but also know when to throw the ball away, uh, you know, for 
him to be a true freshman and to be able to do those things, how impressive is that? And how much does that help the offense knowing yeah. that he'll sort of know when to yeah. give up on a play? Yeah, um, they had a lot of guys returning. And I, I know they were without their, their really good linebacker. Um, but to go against a defense like that, I've got so much respect for their defensive coordinator and their defensive staff. And we didn't turn the football over. That that was a huge thing. And some of those times, a young player may force a throw when he's scrambling and doesn't see anybody open. He just said, you know what, I'll throw it away. You know the number one stat that we look for is did you win the game? So I know he was 14 of 31, but he threw the ball away and avoided a number of sacks or lost yards. And you know what, he's 1-0 and as a starting quarterback. And that's the number one stat that we look at. And he helped us win. And he made big time play after big time play. He made the check uh, on the last touchdown, throwing it to Jace. He saw the look. I mean, how many young kids are going to say, nope, I'm going to change it right now, and then throw a, a great dime to him? Uh, coach, for the offense not score for over a quarter, and then Avery to lead a drive with two big long, third and long conversions, and then the touchdown throw, what does that just say about him? Well, um, you know, for starters, it says a heck of a lot about our defense because we did a great job in that second half on defense against a quarterback that was, you know, he's a fifth year guy. Not many fifth year seniors playing bowl games, so my hat's off to him for playing in the game. Um, and for a fifth year guy to play in that game and lead his team, and he got after us in the first half. We did some different things, changed our stunts up to allow us to make him kick field goals which allowed that one opportunity for us to, to get a big time drive, um, convert some third downs, convert some fourth downs. And guys, we had two touchdowns called back too. Um, so um, we did some good things. We had a punt return called back. We had a, a long touchdown pass called back. And for us to finish that game with a big couple big drives says a ton about our, 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 our total team. Coach, two things. Fourth and one, you run behind Cooper Beebe and KT Leviston, get the first down, score a touchdown after that. To end the game, you run behind KT Leviston and Cooper Beebe to ice the game. Pretty smart. <laughs> you know? Um, those guys are really good players. And, you know, uh, and, and give it to DJ. And, uh, and then the other time, we spread everybody out. And we hadn't done that out of that personnel grouping. Great call by Connor Riley. Spread everybody out. We've been given the ball out of our two tight end set. Get into a two tight end set. Spread everybody out. Give the ball to Avery. And we were really smart with Avery, guys. Um, you know, he was the only guy we really felt comfortable and confident with to be able to step up and play tonight. So we weren't going to just run the guy 20 times. We wanted to showcase his arm and showcase ability. Guys, the play he made making the check on the first drive throwing that touchdown pass to DJ. We'd worked that, and we had not done that all year. Um, but to make that play and to see everybody coming at you and DJ kind of sidestep the, the last blitzer and come up, that, that's, uh, that's, that's football 401 done by a true freshman. Coach, you talked about the O-line all week, and they certainly went out tonight and, and made you proud, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't yeah. think Avery was touched in the backfield. No, uh, he, he wasn't. I'm, I know he wasn't. And uh, those guys are the heart and soul of our, our offense. I had to give Gilly crap. He, was, he wasn't feeling well, so he missed yesterday. Um, came back fresh, so he just maybe needed a day to, to, to rest and sleep. But he had had the flu um, and bounced back, gave him an IV today, and, and he played his tail off. And, you know, we rotated. We played seven guys in there with TP and Carver Willis, and we're excited because three of those guys are returning too. You know, it's not like – I know we lose a lot of really good players in the O-line, but we got three studs coming back there uh, and a lot of good uh, – youth that uh, has learned from Coach Riley. So uh, we're going to go as far as our O-line and D-line take us, and both groups were really good tonight. Um, they love K-State. They love the culture that they built, and they love the fact that um, they got one more stage to play with their brothers. And uh, that, that's a party going on in there with those six-year guys. and. Um, I, I think it says more that they came back to play for K-State this year. And so many of those guys are old linemen, and they came back to play for Connor Riley. Uh, thanks.